Are you a first time home buyer thinking of purchasing a home in 2023? Well, this is the right video for you to watch. So make sure you stay to the very end. I'm gonna give you some updates in the market, things that we are seeing personally, so that way you can be successful with your home purchase. Now, the market has shifted since the summer of 2022. We've seen interest rates more than double inventory is still low and prices have been tapering off in most parts of the country you've even seen some price reductions even coming from the new home builders so what does this all mean to you as a first-time home buyer and should you even be buying a house this year well in my opinion it all depends on what your financial situation looks like everyone's going to be a little different and i think this year you can't necessarily put out a blanket statement and say yes you should be buying because there's some of you that i've spoken to and i've had some clients that are just not quite ready and i'm also going to give you some tips on what you could be doing if you're not ready to buy so again stay to the very end so i can walk you through those tips so you can be successful in the future now the theme of 2023 so far has been you can negotiate like hell this is a good thing we are starting to see more and more sellers out there being more realistic with their prices and willing to come down and negotiate these days again if you think about what happened during covid you couldn't negotiate this was the theme during that time of season when you were buying you couldn't negotiate you couldn't ask for anything and you better have had a ton of money to come in over above the asking price so you can get into your house but now think about where all those guys are today. Most of them, if they didn't put a lot of money down, are probably upside down in value on their home simply because they were chasing the 2% interest rate. Now again, today, interest rates are in the 6 and 7% range, but the sellers are willing to talk. That's a huge advantage for you as a first time home buyer. I have two people in my office that are trying to flip a house right now, and they literally talked the seller down about $60,000 off the list price of the house. They got a deal on it. The house was listed for about 390 ish and they got it for about 330. And I think in any market, regardless of interest rates, that would be a great deal. So they're gonna make some money on that house. And those are scenarios that you could be experiencing too, but you just gotta have the right team in place. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I stress strategy and I stress having the right team by your side to make this happen. So if you're in the market to buy, just know this, you can negotiate. You can negotiate anything and everything you want. You want the seller to pay your HOA for a year? Ask them for that. You want the seller to cover your closing costs? Ask for that. You want them to come down on their sales price? That's on the table to talk about. So make sure you get a realtor that knows how to negotiate. This is something that is so critical in the buying process that not a lot of real estate agents know how to do. And I say that not to throw shade at them, but most realtors are not closing multiple deals every single month. In fact, some of them don't even do a deal every quarter. So if you're not doing a high volume number of deals, how can you know how to negotiate? It's not gonna happen. So make sure that if you are working with a realtor, do your due diligence, ask them how many deals they're doing, ask them about some of the latest wins that they've had so you can see what type of negotiating did they accomplish for their other buyers. And another thing you could also do is when you work with a lender, every good lender works with good real estate agents as well. So your loan officer can certainly refer you to a good real estate agent so they can work for you. So the theme again for 2023 is negotiate. Redfin actually just put out an article that stated that about 41.9% of home sales in the fourth quarter had some sort of concession. That's huge to think about as we talk about negotiating. You're talking about 40% of all the homes that are selling, the seller was able to give something back to the buyer to help them get into your home. This is why this year, if you are looking to buy, this is gonna be a huge help because if you don't have a ton of money saved, maybe you're limited on closing costs or your budget to come to the table with, this is where the sellers can help you get your foot in the door. Now you might say, well, Sean, I don't like the 6% rate. Okay, that's fair. A lot of people don't like 6%. But again, if you look back over the last 50 years of where mortgages have been tracked by Freddie Mac, you will see that the average rate is about 7.5%. Now, of course, prices were cheaper back in the day. However, this is where you gotta understand, you just gotta get your foot in the door. So you're not gonna buy at the most perfect opportune time. I don't know when that will ever happen because there's always something that could deter you from buying. Let's go back and look at during the housing crash. A lot of people did not wanna buy homes during 2010, 11, and 12, even though that was the bottom of the market. You didn't wanna buy a house because 
homes were beat up. Many of the homes that were being sold were foreclosures. And here in Las Vegas, about 60% of all the transactions were cash buyers. And guess who was buying? It was all the investors. So even though you might sit back and be like, oh my God, that guy made a ton of money on his house. I would have bought three houses back then. No, you wouldn't have because interest rates are about seven, seven and a half percent. And when you walked into a house, the house was so trashed, you probably wouldn't want to do the renovation yourself. I've seen houses where the homeowner that left the property literally poured concrete down the bathroom drain. They poured it down the kitchen sink drain, literally ran the water and left. That's how crazy it was. People would spray paint all over the house. They'd knock holes through every single wall. They'd steal the AC units. So there was all these other external factors that were taking place during that time that would have prevented you from buying. And not to mention the media, all they talked about was that Las Vegas, Florida, California were some of the most highly, highly touted foreclosure parts of the country. So what did that say? They said not to buy. There's more foreclosures in Las Vegas. Don't buy. But you know what? When I was doing loans back then, we were financing single family homes for like $80,000. There were condos that were being sold for like $20,000. It was insane. I had clients that were investors that were literally coming to town and saying, Sean, you can finance 10 mortgages for me. I'm going to buy 10 houses this weekend and you just take care of it for me. Those guys saw the opportunity, but many of you probably could have bought back then and you didn't. Now again, 2020 interest rates were 2%. How many of you sat on the sidelines? Because why? Because so many of you thought that interest rates were going to go to 1%. Oh, I'm not going to take two and a half. That's too high. I want one and a half. That was insane. I remember having these conversations with people that did not want to buy or refinance. So what'd you do? You waited on the sidelines, but everyone else bought before the frenzy happened, locked in a really low interest rate. So then you missed that boat. And now we're in another opportunity where the sellers are willing to literally offer you almost the article says here on Redfin, 41% of the sellers are willing to contribute something to close huge opportunity, two ways to look at the glass as always half full or half empty. So you have to look for opportunity. Don't get caught up in the media. Don't get caught up in all the negativity. Cause if you're all about that, you might as well leave my channel now because I will never talk about losing. I don't believe in losing. I believe in winning and there's always a way to win a deal. Now, as a first time home buyer, you have to realize that rates change every single day. This is something that many of you aren't aware of and you choose your mortgage lender based on who's got the lowest rate. So the thing you have to understand when you look at shopping around for a lender is that you can either get the lowest rate or the lowest cost mortgage. You have to figure out what means more to you because if you go for the lowest rate, typically what a loan officer is going to do is they're going to charge you points or discount points to buy your interest rate down. They may not disclose that to you because there's some guys that are out there that just want to get the deal. So when you call up a loan officer and you're like, Hey, Kirsten, what's your rate today? They're going to give you some really low rate and they're going to charge you probably two to three points, but they're not going to tell that to you over the phone. And you're going to go decide to go work with that lender. And then three weeks into your deal, when you finally look at your loan estimate, because you did not pay attention to everything up front, you're going to realize like, what is this extra $15,000 charge? Oh, well, that's to get your interest rate because you told me you wanted the lowest rate. Well, you never told me about the $15,000 charge. And now you've got one week to close your deal and it's too late for you to go shop around and you're going to close that transaction. That happens every single day. I've had clients come to me after watching our channel that brought us loan estimates that they were being charged over $30,000 for their interest rate. So you either get the lowest rate or the lowest cost. Now, when you get the lowest cost, you're not going to get the lowest interest rate. It may be a quarter percent higher. It may not be that big of a difference. So the thing that I always stress to my team when we work with our clients is to make sure you give them several options. We typically give you two to four options for you to decide and you can see on paper how the mortgages work out because there may be somewhat of a hybrid of a lower rate with a lower cost. So you have to figure out what works for you and not just shop for the lowest rate because I can guarantee you if all you care about is the lowest rate, you're going to sacrifice service. You're going to sacrifice quality. You're going to sacrifice knowledge 
because the guy that gives you the lowest rate, I guarantee you they don't have the other three things. And you can contest me on this, but after 15 years of doing loans and closing thousands of mortgages for people, I know that the guy who has the lowest rate does not have the amount of experience that my team and I have. Now, a lot of you have been waiting on the sidelines because you think that there's gonna be this massive crash in the housing market and values are gonna come down. Well, I'm gonna break it to you right now. I'm gonna ruin your dreams and I'm gonna tell you that's not going to happen. I really do not believe that's going to happen. And the reason being is because we are underbuilt as a country, as far as homes go. You can see over the last several months, the builders have been pulling back on their building permits and they haven't been building as many new homes. Because you have to think about when these builders are building, they're thinking six, nine, 12 months out because it takes them a while to build that house. So if they're reducing the amount of permits that they're pulling today, they are predicting that they may not be able to offload those homes that far in advance in the future. So of course, they don't want inventory sitting on the market because every day a house sits, they're losing money with carrying costs. As a buyer, you have to understand the basic supply and demand, right? They taught this to us at Economics 101 in school. So when you have a limited amount of supply, prices go up. That's what we saw during COVID. You had one house for sale and you had 50 people that were willing to make an offer on that property. Fast forward to today, we still don't have a lot of homes on the market, given that the inventory has ticked up a little bit, but you still have pent up demand of buyers on the sidelines. So instead of one house on the market, call it three houses on the market. Instead of 50 buyers, you have 15 buyers. So you still have some of these multiple offer situations that makes it a little more difficult for you to get into your house. But again, the sellers are willing to negotiate. The sellers are willing to entertain an offer because just like you as a home buyer want the 2% interest rate, the seller wants to sell their house in a week with multiple offers like they did back during COVID. So there's this disillusion between buyers and sellers that want things that don't exist anymore. So we have to come to the reality of what the market is today. So again, basic supply and demand. If we have a limited amount of inventory, which we still do, home prices are going to go up. Now, there's been a lot of talks from a lot of the housing experts saying that in 2023, they predict zero home appreciation, zero. Normally, you see anywhere from five to 7%. During the COVID times, we were seeing 18, 19, 20% in some markets. So when you see a limited amount of supply, the builder's not having the confidence to start building homes again, there's a problem that comes up because a lot of the sellers that would have normally been willing to sell their home, they're in a position that they don't need to sell. For example, if you bought or refinanced your house in the last several years, you probably have a two or 3% interest rate somewhere in that ballpark. Maybe you would have looked to upgrade your home by now. Maybe you would have sold it, moved to another part of the country because of work or whatever opportunities that might come your way. But because rates are in the six and 7% range, you're not as excited to go and sell your house. So that means that house that you would have normally put on the market now stays off the market, which again, constricts the amount of homes that are for sale, which means prices can either stabilize or they can continue to grow, but just at a very, very small pace. This is something that a lot of first time home buyers, you have to understand this concept. The only way we lose more value is if we have more inventory, but the only way we get more inventory is if the banks make the same mistake they did during the 2008 crash and foreclose on the home and then flood the market with inventory or the builders overbuilt and had a bunch of standing inventory homes. But none of these scenarios are going to play out. And you can challenge me on this, but I would tell you the banks had the opportunity to foreclose on people and kick them out of their houses during COVID. But what did they do? They offered them forbearance plans. They said, if you can't pay your mortgage, you can stay in your house for a full year. They were doing it every quarter. They would reassess the forbearance and say, yes, we'll extend it another three months but I had clients that were in their house for a year, never made a payment, and it didn't affect their credit. So the banks could have made the same mistake like they did during the foreclosure crisis and said, well, you can't pay your mortgage, tough luck. You've got to figure it out. We're going to foreclose on you. Maybe we might do a loan modification. But again, they were smart this time, and they did not kick people out of their house, which again, prevented more inventory of hitting the market. And what did the builders do? The builders didn't go out and say, hey, let's go build 50 houses today because we have this long line of people down the street that wanna buy our house. No, 
they did not build more houses because they knew that the 50 of you that were waiting in line were willing to pay over and above the list price of what they offered. So they were offering lotteries. Now you have to get to the track at 5 a.m. and wait, and hopefully you got your number called. They weren't doing that back in the day. Everyone's got smarter about how they're selling these homes so they can make the most amount of money. And we, as the consumer, we just go along with how they're playing the game and we're losing. But this is where in today's market where you have uncertainty and you have a lot of people that don't want to buy and they want to wait. This is where you as a first time home buyer, you can win in this market. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, I'm talking crazy right now, but I can tell you from the deals that we are doing, from the people that are flipping houses in my office, from the clients that are getting into houses, that the appraisals are coming in above what we paid for the house, we are getting deals. This is the thing that I wanna to stress to you. There are deals to be had out there. It's just a matter of is it gonna be you or is it gonna be your friend or someone else that's willing to participate in the market today? Now, as you sit on the sidelines, there's a group of people that are buying homes and they have a massive amount of money and they're doing so. This is the one thing that scares the living daylights out of me because they are taking away the American dream, which is to own a home. Now that may have changed over time, but for many of us, this is one thing we've always wanted to do. You always wanted to buy a house to own a home, but Wall Street and some of these hedge fund investors are getting into the single family real estate game. You can look this up. You can look up companies like Tricon Residential and some of these other companies that literally have billions of dollars, billions of dollars with a B that they have literally earmarked to say, we want to go buy single family residential homes. They're not buying strip malls. They're not buying apartment complexes. They are buying houses that both you and I would normally go and purchase to either live in or rent. So again, when you have a massive amount of buyers out there, because if you and I decide not to buy, these guys are buying homes. And for all of the developers that are out there that have maybe a few homes that they didn't sell because maybe the buyers backed out of the contract because the interest rates got too high and they couldn't qualify, they are then offloading these homes to these institutional investors so the homes don't sit. So again, the inventory that would have normally have been available for us to buy is slowly getting gobbled up by Wall Street. So when you think about the opportunity that's out there right now, it's actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the days go by because these guys are out there buying anything and everything that fits within their buy box, which is typically the average single family home, which is probably about three bedroom, two bath, maybe 15 to 1800 square feet, which fits the mold for a first time home buyer. So if you don't get your act together, you don't figure out what you need to do to be able to purchase, I potentially think you could miss the entire opportunity to become a homeowner. And this is the thing that scares me the most because you might be working your tail off trying to fix your credit, trying to save up money so you can buy a house. And maybe the timing is just never working out right, but you need to figure out where you stand today. So even if you watch this video and you're still watching it right now, and you might say, Sean, I'm not ready to buy yet. That's okay. This is why you need to talk to either a loan officer or talk to a real estate agent locally in your market or has knowledge of your market and find out what you have to do. You have to figure out where you are missing the boat. Is it your credit? Is it your debt to income ratio? Is it how much money you have in the bank? What is holding you back? And for all you guys, put your pride and ego to the side. You can't let that hold you back because all I have to say is look where it's gotten you so far. Right? If you're 30, 40, 50 years old, you've never owned a house, shame on you. You got to figure it out now. So we got to figure out from ground zero, what's holding you back? Because once we can lay out that plan to then say, if you go do these things on your credit, you start paying this credit card down, maybe pick up a side hustle, pick up a second job so you can get more income. These little tweaks can totally fix your picture and you might be a homeowner in a year, maybe even two years, maybe it takes a little longer but any good loan officer is gonna give you that advice and they're gonna be by your side for that entire time because they wanna see you win. And that's one thing, like I said, in my office with all of our clients with what we do, we love winning. I don't like to work with people that are down on the market. I want people that believe that they can have an opportunity and they deserve an opportunity to become a homeowner. 
because we have access to first time home buyer programs. We have access to grant and assistance programs that can literally give you money to buy a house. There are parts all across the country that qualify for USDA financing, which means you can put no money down and you can buy a house as long as the home qualifies for that type of financing. There's all these low down payment programs that are out there. You can put 3% down, three and a half, five percent 5% down. It's almost the equivalent to sometimes what you're putting down for your rent, your last month's deposit, security deposit, pet deposit, all these things are literally comparable to what it could take to buy a house today. So two ways to look at the market. You can look at opportunity, figure out where you stand, and now start connecting the dots to be able to get you into home ownership. Or you can be like the naysayers and think the market's gonna crash. I think you're wrong. I think you're gonna miss the boat. And if that's the case, make sure that you are ready to take advantage if that ever happens. I personally don't think that's going to happen. I think that no matter what, the housing market is going to stay strong. Yes, we might see somewhat of a correction, somewhat of a pullback, but I do not see a crash happening. So first time home buyers in 2023, I think this is the year for you. And if you need more information on the entire process, there's a link below to my first time home buyers guide that can walk you through that process. Or if you're ready to get started, send me an email, we'll get the application going and we'll get you out shopping for your home. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.